Hey, D Dexter here on another calculus video. Today we're talking about finding upper and lower sums for a region. So here we go. Uh, let's look at some basic notation, okay? Here we have, if we want to find the lower sum, this will be little s or lowercase s of n is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to the nth number of rectangles. And that sum will be of the change in x times f of lowercase m sub i. So now that is where we're going to uh, differentiate between an uppercase and a lowercase m. One will be the lower uh, sum and one will be the upper sum. Let's recall what this means. This is dealing with inscribed rectangles. Okay, these rectangles are inside or under the curve. So that means that in most cases, these will be left-sided rectangles. Again, we already have some knowledge about change in x. Change in x is b minus a. Where do we get that? We get that from the interval, the interval of x values from a to b. Uh, b minus a divided by n, which would be the number of rectangles that we have. Then a is your lower x value, b is your upper x value, and n is the number of rectangles. Okay. So one more thing to point out here is your m of i, what you're going to put into the function is a, your starting point, because maybe you start at 0, maybe you start at 2, who knows? So we want to make sure we account for that. Plus your change in x times i minus 1. Now that will be the ith term, and we're going to subtract 1. So that means we're going to the left, and that means we're looking at lower or left-sided uh, rectangles inside the curve. If we want an upper sum, now we're going to deal with capital S of n is equal to the sum of i equals 1 of n times the change in x, right? How wide are your uh, rectangles that you're making? Times the function of m sub i, capital M sub i now. So that indicates that you're doing an upper sum. So clever, weren't they, right? With, uh, with lower, lowercase, upper, uppercase, okay. These are circumscribed rectangles. So that means they're above or outside the curve. And in most cases, these are right-sided rectangles, and that m sub i is equal to a plus the change in x times i, or in the i term. Okay, let's look at an example. Here we go. We are given our function is y equal x squared. We're given the interval from 1 to, or 0 to 2, I should say, excuse me. We're asked to find the lower sum. So we have the change in x. We get 2 minus 0. That comes from my b minus a over n. Now, in this case, we don't know the number of rectangles. They didn't give it to us. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep it in terms of n all the way through. So your m sub i is 0 because that's your a value, right? comes directly from your interval, plus 2 over n times i minus 1. Now, in, what, in this language, it's going to, going to say that the sum from i to n, your change in x, 2 over n, times, now here's where I put my m sub i into the function. See, I've got to put it all in for this x right here. So I'll have 2 over n times i minus 1, and that, all that quantity will be squared. Hopefully you can see that. It's pretty light, I know, I see. Um, well, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take out the sum just for space reasons, right? 2 over n times, well, I'm going to square this, 4 over n squared, right? Times i minus 1 quantity squared. Then what I can do is I'm going to multiply this out, okay? i minus 1 squared times i minus 1 squared is i squared minus 2i plus 1. That, again, is all times 4 over n squared. And then my change of x is outside. Well, I'm going to distribute my change in x. 2 over n times 4 over n squared uh, will give me 8 over n cubed. 
And now I need to put everything in terms of n. So we recall that i squared is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6 minus 2 times the quantity of our i. Well, i is n times n plus 1 over 2. And then we have a constant here of 1. So anytime we have a constant, we just add n, okay? Add an n or replace it with an n or n times the coefficient. All right, here we go. So now carrying forward, we have 8 over n cubed. And what I did was I just distributed the first n. n times n is n squared times n plus or n plus 1 or it, 1 to is n squared plus n times 2n plus 1 all divided by 6. Easy for me to say. Minus, well, the 2's canceled. I can get rid of those 2's. See, these 2's right here, they'll just go away. Bam, bam. Those go away. And so we're left with negative n times n plus 1 plus n. Again, distribute. I get 2n cubed plus n squared plus 2n squared plus n all over 6 minus, distribute this n there and there, I get n squared minus n plus the n that was already there, all times 8 over n cubed. Simplify even more. 8 over n cubed. Add these two that are like 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n minus all over 6 minus n squared because these two ends went away. All right, now, if I distribute and also simplify, what we'll get is if I take this 8 and multiply it by that 2, I get 16 over 6. Well, I'll divide each of those by 2, you get 8 over 3, and the n cubed and this n cubed will cancel. You see that? So I have no ends left in this front piece, front term. 8 times 3 is 24, n squared over n cubed. Well, 24 divided by 6 is just 4. If I have 3 n's in the denominator and 2 in the numerator, I'm left with 1 n in the denominator. If I bring 8 times n over 6, I get 4 thirds well, there's only one n in the numerator, three in the denominator, so that means I have left with an n squared minus eight times n squared. Well, that's going to give me eight over n. Now, I can simplify. Eight thirds will stay eight thirds minus four n. Well, here's a four n over n minus eight over n. So that gives me a negative four over n plus 4 thirds over uh, 4 divided by 3 n squared, okay? So this would be the sum. Now, if we had any value of n, we could simplify and put it in there. If the, if the n was 4 rectangles or 8 rectangles or 6, we could simply plug that in and we'd be able to get an answer here for us. Now, the other thing we want to consider is what happens as n goes to infinity. So if we apply the limit, the limit as n goes to infinity. So the limit, I'm going to jump over here, the limit as n goes to infinity, what will happen to the value of this 4 if this n continues to increase? Think about it. 4 over 10, that's a number. 4 over 100, getting a smaller number. 4 over 1,000, 4 slices over 1,000. Now it's very, very thin, very small, right? So this number, as we take the limit as n goes to infinity, this number will end up going closer and closer to 0. Same thing here. 4 divided by 3 times n squared. Well, now if n is, you know, a, a small number, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's squared. So this again will run to 0 really quickly because that 4 will keep continue to diminish. So again, 
that one will go to zero. So what we might say then is that as n goes to infinity, our value or the sum of these rectangles would be 8 thirds. And that's what we might say is an answer for this. So two things. One is just the basic answer with n's included. And if we wanted to apply the limit definition to this, then what we could do is say that n goes to zero for all the n's in the denominators, which would normally give us just the, co the, the term with just a numerical value in it. All right? So hopefully that's helped. Enjoy. Thanks again. That has been finding upper and lower sums of a region. Thanks again for hanging out. Dee Dijkstra, out.